violence has no place in Canadian society. Canadians will not be intimidated. We will not meet violence with more violence. We will meet fear and hatred with love and compassion. One year ago, prosecutors say Alexandra Bissonnette entered a mosque in Quebec City and shot dead six men and injured 19 others. It reignited a debate over whether Canada has a problem with Islamophobia. The mosque still receives hate mail. Its imam's car was satellite outside his home. But plans are in place to tackle this prejudice. To mark the 12-month anniversary of the shooting, Canada is holding a day of remembrance. Muslim groups say it should also be a day of action against Islamophobia, but not everyone agrees. In fact, a poll shows most are against it, saying Canada has no problem with Muslims. So is that the case? Well, let's go to the city of Toronto now and speak to Chris Alexander. He was Canada's immigration minister under the former Conservative Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Chris Alexander, thank you very much for your time. I know that you can't see me, but if I tell you my name is Adnan Nawaz and I was born in Pakistan, you'll get an idea of what I look like. Do you feel that I would be safe if I wanted to visit Quebec City? It's an important question, isn't it? Yes, um, you would be safe, Adnan, but I'm wondering still today whether you would feel as safe as I would want you to feel as a Canadian. Uh, I mean, this attack that came a year ago was shocking for three reasons. First, it was a terrorist attack. It was murder, cold-blooded murder, but it was designed to sow fear within a certain group. Secondly, it was an attack on worshippers in their place of worship, which in this case was a mosque. And secondly, and thirdly, it happened in a city that is incredibly peaceful uh, most of the time. In two, all of 2016, there was only one murder in the city of Quebec, which is a city of over half a million people. So for six people to be killed at once, because of their religion, because they were in a mosque, was shocking, and yes, has made Muslims feel unsafe in that community. And there have also been attacks on the car of the director of that mosque uh, and other hate crimes uh, by a small group of people who are clearly radicalized. Uh, and none of us want, in Canada wants to see this kind of crime continue. We never want to see this kind of murder of people worshipping uh, murder designed to sow fear among an entire group in Canada ever again in this country. Why do you think it's taken so long for Alexandre Bissonnette to come to trial? His trial will begin towards the end of March, and that will then be more than a year since he carried out that atrocity. Well, in, in a multiple murder ca homicide case, that is not unusual in the Canadian justice system. I know prosecutors and investigators will want to get their work right. Uh, and it depends on the nature of the case. Uh, I mean, we as a public do not know much about Bissonnette's uh, motivation. Uh, it seems to have been online radicalization. It seems to have been a private path that he was on rather than association with a group, but we'll have to wait for the evidence to come out in court. Uh, obviously, investigators want to get this right, want to ensure convictions. Um, you know, I, here I have to say one of the triggers for people like Bissonnette clearly has been hate speech, clearly has been people like Marine Le Pen, uh, uh, people like Donald Trump, who've been prepared to say extreme things intolerant things, racist things about groups uh, identifying them on the basis of religion and ethnicity, and that has no place in a free and democratic society. Chris, it's interesting because, of course, Alexandre Bissonnette does express support for both Marine Le Pen and Donald Trump, but you served in the government of Stephen Harper, and Muslims in Canada have said that there was an increasing marginalization, otherization, a word they've invented, but we know what it means, being pushed to the sidelines of Canadian society during the premiership of Stephen Harper, who was the prime minister for a long time, for 10 years, and those Muslims feel that his government marginalized them more than previous governments. What can you say in defense of the premiership of Stephen Harper, a, a, a prime minister under whom you served? I, I would dispute that account. We had record levels of immigration from yes, undisputed, the undisputed. Muslim world. We're talking about we, Muslims, we, we Muslim had record levels feelings. of. 
We're talking about their feelings, not about the practical things that yeah. you did, about being feeling marginalized. I think Muslims have felt uh, marginalized increasingly and felt sometimes targeted by hate crimes and intolerance as uh, the Islamic State has taken its fight to Western jurisdictions, uh, above all to Western Europe, but to some extent uh, beyond as well. Uh, the Quebec uh, phenomenon of radicalization is, has been connected to the kind of polarized discourse we've seen in France. People in Quebec obviously follow those debates uh, more closely than people in English Canada. And it has led to misunderstanding and, yes, Islamophobia. Islamophobia is a challenge in Canada. Uh, but our government, and I think Canadians at all levels of government and in all parties, are doing their utmost to try and make sure that this is the most welcoming country uh, in the world and that hate crimes are prosecuted in this country. In fact, Adnan, in recent years, the largest number of hate crimes in this country continue to be committed against people who identify as members of the black community. Uh, Anti-Semitism is the second highest category. Hate crimes against people who are from the South Asian community face challenges. Not a large number of such crimes, uh, but a significant number that we need to take note of, and one of those crimes is too many in this country. Uh, yes, hate crimes against people because of their Muslim faith is also a reality, and we need to take action against it. Um, okay, let's speak to Hassan Ghadi, who is in Quebec City. Hassan is executive director of the National Council of Canadian Muslims. So, Hassan, we began the discussion by me asking Chris if I would feel safe uh, being born in Pakistan, British citizen, Pakistani. Uh, would I feel safe coming to Quebec City? You are there. Chris said I would be safe, but I not, may not feel as safe as he would want me to feel. How do you feel in that city? Thank you for having me on, Adnan. Uh, I think, you know, the, the feeling here in Quebec uh, is that obviously after the shootings in Quebec City, uh, there was a tremendous outpouring of support, and that was incredibly heartwarming and welcome. Uh, we heard this from across the country and from here in Quebec, uh, politicians, elected officials, uh, media personalities, and others uh, speaking out against hatred and xenophobia. Unfortunately, uh, that appeared to be quite short lived. Uh, we've seen hate continuing uh, patterns of hatred here in, in Quebec as well as other parts of the country. In Quebec City, just in December alone, the chief of police noted a doubling of hate crimes targeting Canadian, uh, Muslims in Quebec City alone from 21 incidents in 2016 to 42 incidents in 2017. Uh, within 36 hours, for example, of the news breaking that the city of Quebec had sold uh, land to the mosque in question to use as a cemetery, the uh, car of the president of the mosque was firebombed. So there is still growing concern and there still is uh, this unsettled feeling amongst Muslims here in Quebec, in Quebec City, uh, as well as across the country. Uh, you know, there's uh, a debate about semantics, about terminology, about uh, whether or not, uh, you know, people are comfortable with the word Islamophobia. Uh, I think that, you know, that uh, that should not negate or take away from uh, the responsibility of all stakeholders, including governments at all levels, uh, to speak out unequivocally, uh, to take uh, action where they can to to recognize this phenomenon uh, and, and to have a conversation about, you know, how we can okay. work together to address this. Isan, I've read articles written by Canadian Muslims saying that they feel marginalized, that they feel otherized, uh, which I've also spoken to Chris about. But my question to you is, how much are Muslims themselves to blame for being marginalized, if indeed that is the case? Because there is a certain amount of political apathy amongst Canadian Muslims. You know it as well as I do. I know it from research. You must know it firsthand. For example, voter turnout amongst the Canadian Muslim community is below the national average. They're not as engaged as other members of, Can of the Canadian wider nation. Well, thank you for that question, Adnan. Uh, you know, I would uh, dispute the, the engagement levels in our last 2015 election uh, due to the efforts of organizations such as ours, uh, as well as other organizations such as the Canadian Muslim Vote. Uh, we saw, yes, historically, population, uh, the voting 
trends amongst the Muslim population tended to be low, but in the last federal election, uh, due to those efforts, we saw voting rates increase to 79% across the country and 88% just within the greater Toronto area alone. Uh, so yes, there is obviously more work that can and does and will continue to need to be done. Uh, there are elections that are occurring uh, regularly across the country, including right here in Quebec, which uh, in our view helps to explain partly why there are some political parties that unfortunately are, are not in favor of this uh, call that NCCM has made for a national day of remembrance and action on Islamophobia. Uh, at the same time, our call was actually not addressed to the provincial government. Uh, we, we addressed it to the federal government. Uh, and of course, uh, we welcome others supporting. And we've seen now a, a momentum building, a groundswell of support building for this call. We've had over 70 Canadian Muslim organizations endorse the call. Over two dozen uh, of our interfaith and civil society allies, including groups like the United Church of Canada, the Canadian Labour Congress, Amnesty International, uh, and municipalities as well coming on board with the cities of Markham, Hamilton, St. John's, and other cities, uh, considering this week making announcements of proclamations uh, of days of remembrance uh, and action on Islamophobia. Of course, this is a symbolic step, and it's a first step, but uh, symbols matter, uh, Adnan, and it's important to us that uh, we recognize this day not only just to honor the memory of the victims, uh, the six men who were killed and who left behind 17 orphans and six widows, but also the 19 others who were injured uh, and the reverberations that have been felt by this act. The first time in history in North America where somebody has walked into a mosque and de de deliberately targeted worshipers. Uh, this is an important day and it's important because we also have precedent. This is not something new that NCCM and our allies are calling for. December the 6th is, uh, is recognized as a National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women in honor of the 14 women who were killed in 1989 at the Ecole Polytechnique. Uh, does that mean that all Canadians are misogynistic or all men are misogynistic? Of course not. Uh, in the same way, it doesn't mean that a call for remembrance and action on Islamophobia uh, implies that all Quebecers or all Canadians are Islamophobic. What it does is it recognizes that this is a phenomenon that is occurring, that governments, while they can't legislate tolerance and acceptance, do have a responsibility, our elected officials have a responsibility to speak out against this culture of impunity that exists towards hatred and, uh, hatred and hateful commentary uh, in order to make sure that they are, are leading the population and, and doing their jobs. Okay, Isan, you need to be brief in this last question that I'm going to put to you. Canada has long been considered one of the nicest countries in the world. The people are so well behaved, they know exactly how they're supposed to relate to their neighbours, to the rest of the country. Everybody holds it up as an example of good behavior. Has something changed in the country in the past, what, 10, 20 years? I've got two pages here of examples of Islamophobia. However big, however small, they are examples of Islamophobia. Has something changed? Well, I think that, you know, that, that reputation that Canada has around the world, um, you know, it, it's not surprising. People do tend to look to Canada as a, a model for multiculturalism. And, and yes, I think Canada is certainly doing some things right. But of course, I think more can and does need to be done. And, and we do need to recognize that, you know, hatred, Islamophobia and other forms of xenophobia is anti-Semitism, uh, anti-black racism, anti-indigenous racism. These are real problems uh, and they require real solutions. And they are something that one community alone cannot solve. We need to have all stakeholders, governments, educators, uh, media as well plays a role and a responsibility uh, to ensure that we're having these courageous conversations uh, and looking at ways to address this both in the short, medium and long term. Isan Gaudi in Quebec City, thank you very much indeed. We will leave the discussion there with you, but we began it in Toronto with Chris Alexander and Chris also, thanks to both of you for your time. Appreciate it.